Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing just great. How are you? Did you have a birthday yesterday? You didn't say no. It was a week. It was in July. It was July twenty second. I don't know why. I I thought I saw something on Facebook yesterday. Did you see that? Well, Glenda did. (laughs) Yeah, I did too. Yeah, I don't. I know it was in July. Okay. Well, you had you had one on Facebook yesterday also. Well, good. I deserve as many as I can get. Yeah, because actually for my birthday, I was in Fresno with okay. a client. Okay. Wouldn't it be great if you had multiple birthdays if they went backwards instead of forward? Oh, absolutely. 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 <laughs> so, well, am I- go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say, am I able to share? Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll do that and then I'll leave you alone because I know you know what to do. So I'm making you a co-host. There you go. Thank you so much. You need, I'll throw some stuff in there in a little while in the chat. What? Ha- oh, okay. Let me try again. Did that come up? I don't see anything. Okay. Shit. Shoot. Oh, I know it's okay. Yeah, you, yeah. Now that you said I, you know what you're doing. Look at what happens. <laughs> and thank you for doing this one too, Renee. Um, kind of at the last minute. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Not a problem. This is a good one for you, though. The day in the life is a good one. I would, I hope so. You know, it's funny because um, uh, Megan was laughing, my partner was laughing at me, my business partner was laughing at me because when you asked the other day if I'd like to do one, a bigger one on Zoom or on, on the disc. Yeah. Yeah. Renee's going to say no. Well, um, there was so many people in the chat room asking for your materials and I thought, well, you know, you had to rush through it because it's a, you know, that's hard to do in 15 minutes. You know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, hmm. Why is this not letting me do this? Maybe oh, too. Oh. Well, wait a second. I don't think I, I, I don't think it's a problem. Oh, right. Go. Just go to slideshow. Yep. Is there, is it on there? It didn't go to slideshow yet. I wonder if you stop sharing first and then yeah. try to click enable editing. Okay. Okay, then, okay. I don't know if that'll do it or not, because you should be able to edit. Yeah, that. Not that you're gonna, but you should be able to. There we go. Is that show? Yes, you did it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll. I'm gonna hide myself, and then I'll throw some information in the chat in a little bit. Okay. Not a problem. Um, oh, and Renee, to, I'll put this in there too, but tomorrow we're doing kind of that special Ignite where one, the first hour it's zip form templates and the second hour it's a lender. So if you don't mind mentioning that to people, um, that'd be great too. Okay? Uh, okay, okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. How's everybody doing? And I want you guys to talk. Hello. Good morning. Good, good. Okay, so we know people know how to get off a of mute. And it's nine o'clock. So you know what happens when Renee's doing this is we start at nine. One of the things I wanted to do though before we start is number one, introduce myself. Renee Mello. I'm with Keller Williams Santa Cruz. Um, I currently, I'm an agent with Santa Cruz and I also am, um, the director of productivity which is a new position within keller williams and it's similar to what the productivity coach was in the past but with a couple little tweaks so um that's what i am i do in santa cruz i've been with keller williams since 2008 and i absolutely love the company i love the company i love the culture i love um, everything we stand for so um I'm in it for the long haul, and I hope all of you guys are too. So what I was wondering is we all have had homework. Anybody remember what the homework was every day?
going to be a long class. Nobody remembers the homework. Okay. Homework. To was call your database. What was that? To call your database. Absolutely. To call your database, to write notes, and then to add them to your to add them to command of the database, correct? Does anyone have any success stories? Does anyone have anything they want to share from having done that over the last, we're almost at the end of our second week. Um, has anyone had any, any, um, any successes or any ahas or anything like that in doing that? Yeah, I actually uh, call a friend of a friend and okay. um, I kind of uh, was told that they were looking online for just prices mm -hmm. of houses in different areas. And I just give them a call and say, hey, I know you guys need help with, you know, um, online search. Um, your friend told me. <laughs> and would you like me to send this link and kind of show you what's going on in the market? They were like, oh, yeah, we would like to know we're waiting on the market to go down. Okay. Uh, well, you can share my, you know, I, there's my website and uh, you want to take a look at it and maybe find different prices and locations and other areas that you might be interested in. They, they did. That was actually pretty cool. Great. Great. So basically someone gave you the name of someone they knew was looking for property. You followed up with them and you set up a, a drip campaign for them. And do you think that maybe when prices go down, how many people think prices are going to go down? I do. <laughs> okay. Well, when prices go down, these people are going to be ready to roll, right? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. So do you think that's something we should be doing as a realtor is basically tracking our particular area and maybe looking at what the average sales price is in our area um, month to month, week to week? Yes. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Any other success stories? <clears throat> Any other um, ahas that people have gotten? I've gotten some ahas about you know community <laughs> work, you know working in the community and how important that is building um, relationships within your own community and having <laughs> people. Uh, recognize your face within the community that that just makes it easier when you, you approach them about real estate in the future absolutely i've um <clears throat> excuse me i'm a third generation native of watsonville mm -hmm. and um i've gotten to the point now where and, and again you know, i've been real estate here for the last uh well actually since 2000 so 20 years <laughs> and people will say, I see your face everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's what it's, that's what it's all about. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Dennis is getting record, you know, getting so people, when they look at you, they think about real estate. Mm -hmm. So are any of you guys encountering any challenges or anything like that, that you'd like to share or, or I don't want to say frustrations, but you know, things that you would like, that, that, you know, something that's kind of challenging. Now, you guys, I've been in real estate for a long time, and I could actually go, he who speaks first loses and just kind of out silence you. But it, anyway, okay. You don't want to play. <laughs> One of the things that I are finding is uh, challenging is uh, talking about loans and you know how things are important to get pre-approved before they are like no but I just want to see um, the house can can we just uh, go see the house <laughs> yeah yeah and it's like yeah we can look at the house but understand that if you fall in love with it you're not gonna be able to get it so your choice so anyway okay any other comments or anything? Oh, okay. 
who wants to explain to me what this slide says? You guys have been looking at this slide for the last two weeks. So who wants to explain to me what this slide says? This slide says what successful agents do every day. Successful agents grow their business and they run their business. But more importantly, they grow their business on a daily basis via lead generation. Exactly. And if you don't grow your business, you can't run a business. You don't run a business if you can't grow it. Right? Okay. So um, our roadmap for today. Hush. Knees and coffin. Okay. So today we're going to talk about uh, growing your business and running your business. We're going to talk about setting daily, weekly and daily objectives. We're going to talk a little bit about the one thing that agents don't normally do, which is creating accountability. And then we're going to have recaps. So a day in the life, um, you know, includes all these things. And again, what are the, we have successful habits that we do every day, which is building your database, script practice, thank you those who are consistently coming to the script practice, lead generation, and it says here contracts, but we're not into that yet. So this is in the One Thing book, and it's a, a quote from F.M. Alexander. People do not decide their futures. They decide their habits, and their habits decide their future. Oh, that's <laughs> Good, I got some reactions. I heard another, yeah. <laughs> it, anyone want to talk about what that means? Well, your habits is, your habits is what attracts that, those people to you because it's like still shopping still in a way. You know, like if you're a skateboarder, you're going to attract other skateboarders. If you have that habit of constantly going to the skate park, you know, um, if you're, if you're an engineer, you're going to somehow gravitate to it. You know, it's that thing. Whatever you're doing constantly, it's what's going to come to you in a way, I guess. I don't know. You know, John Maxwell, and I'm a John Maxwell certified coach, is uh, one of the things that John Maxwell talks about, and I don't, some of you may not know who he is. He's basically a leadership guru. He's, he's uh, written over 70 books, and a lot of them, most of them have to do with leadership. But what he says is that if I looked at your calendar right now, I can tell you where you're going to be in five years. Oh. Does that make sense? Yes. What you're, what you're doing today is building is the foundation for what you're going to have in five years. Mm -hmm. So the goal of today's session is to develop a plan for how to use your time effectively to fulfill the company mission. And remember, Keller Williams' mission, and this is, this is phenomenal, is to build a career worth having, businesses worth owning, a life worth living, experiences worth giving, and a legacy worth leaving. So if you start your habits now, that will ultimately create the future that you want for yourself. Okay. This is what your calendar should look like. Um, so, you know, the motivation, building time, that could be doing affirmations, that could be meditating, that could be, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, you know, uh, May, you know, one of the books that's out there, The Miracle Morning, talks about five things you should do every morning to, to start your morning um, on the right track. And, you know, again, people, people laugh at me, but, you know, I get up between 4 and 4.30 every morning. But then again, I'm in bed by 8 or 8.30. So, but, you know, I'm a morning person, so I've got so to take much. advantage of that time. Thanks. And that's the other thing John Maxwell says, too, is each, all of us are different. 
you know, so if, if you're a morning person, I have got to schedule my most important things in the morning because by the afternoon I'm falling asleep. Um, you know, I, if I have to do something in the afternoon, I'll do my best to stay away. But again, I know that my zone is in the morning. And so I'm going to ask each of you to be, think about where is your, where is your, uh, peak? and then schedule the most um, important tasks during that. And we'll talk about what those tasks are a little further. So uh, from 8.30 to 11.30, daily, daily success habits. So basically that's gonna be lead generation, that's gonna be script practice. You should be doing script practice for, um, for a half hour every day. And I remember I used to get so intimidated when they said, well, you should have three hours of lead generation. And I'm going, oh my God, you mean I have to be on the phone for three hours every day? And I finally realized that that isn't what they meant. Um, what they meant is, um, I don't think, it, what they meant was, okay, 8.30 to nine o'clock, you're doing your um, script practice. From nine to 9.30, 9.45, what you're doing is you're going through your database or if you're doing the D2, D2, D2 or whatever it is, you're figuring out who you're gonna call. So if you're calling expireds, if you're calling FISBOs, if you're calling you know, people in your database, basically that first 45 minutes is there for you to figure out who you're gonna call for the day, for that, the remaining time. And then from 9.30 till, 10, till 11, 11.30, yeah, that's about the right. You're going to make the phone calls, and then from 11 to 11:30, you're updating your database. Okay, so it's not it it is, but it's not the full three hours. But again, you should be using as max as uh, the maximum amount of time you can. Okay, and then lunch from 11:30 to 12:30. From 12:30 to 2:30, the run the business um, uh, activities. Uh, which is uh, marketing, negotiating contracts, taking listings, all that kind of stuff. Um, no, marketing listings and that. Um, the 2.30 to 4.30 is when you do the seller presentations. It can be in, you know, turned around or whatever. But again, this is the breakdown of the times that you should be dedicating to each thing. Uh, 4.30 to 5.30, you review your calendar for tomorrow and make I'm having trouble seeing this, making um, a success list. And then um, you go from there. One of the things that Gary talks about is at the beginning of each year, you should um, schedule out your year, roughly speaking. So basically, um, one of the things that you should, you know, like we have, we had family reunion, we had mega camp, we had, uh, you know, there may be um, seminars and things like that, that you want to go to. Um, but the first thing you should always, always, always schedule is your holidays, your vacation. Because if you, if you schedule those, number one, you have something to look for, look forward to, and number two, you have something to motivate you to do what you need to do when you're doing what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes. Okay, so that's um, that. Uh-oh. Why is it not letting, uh-oh. Why am I? Okay. There we go. <sighs> okay, so setting weekly and daily objectives. And it says daily success habits are the foundation for growing your business. Now we're going to look at how successful agents incorporate the daily success habits and more into each day to achieve their goal. One of the ways they do this is the 411. Okay, how many people have seen or heard about the 411? I've heard about it. Okay, 
Come on, guys. There's a bunch of people on here with their mutes on or whatever. How many people have heard of it? Say aye. 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 How many aye. people? Okay, great. <laughs> How many people have actually are using it? Okay. I'm assuming that it wasn't that you forgot how to turn the mic back on that you, okay. 411 stands for four weeks and one month and one year. So what it does, what the 411 does is it allows us to break down that activities we need to do on a daily and weekly basis to meet our monthly goal, to meet our annual goal. So if your goal was to, um, and again, I always like dealing with units. I don't like do dealing with volume. I think if we deal with volume, you know, it becomes skewed in that you can say, I want to do $10 million worth of business and you could get, you know, maybe three, $2 million listings and then, you know, four, 1 million and you're done. I like to deal in, in, in numbers and, and numbers are, uh, units are scalable where volume is it, okay? So here you put something like, my annual goal is to close 36 transactions. That was my annual, that was my goal. And I'm still holding to it. Um, so what's my monthly goal? What would be my monthly goal if my goal was to do 36 transactions? So you divide that by 12. Uh-huh, three, right. Yeah, so my goal would be to have three closings a month. So that means I'd have to have seven, uh, 75 percent per week, right? You know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, what I need to do though is I need to then outline the activities that I need to do weekly to support the monthly, to support the annual. So how many appointments do you think I probably need to go on? Listing appointments um, do I need to go on? if I want to close three transactions per month. Six, nine, 12, I don't know. What's yeah, your number? No. The number would be, usually you do about 80%. Oh, gee. Well, I'm behind the ball. <laughs> yeah, well, no, so, uh, no, you have 80% fallout rate. So if I wanted to do three and I close, I really need, to do four listing appointments a month to get four listings. So how many of those four listings, how many are gonna sell? Probably about 90%. So I need to do five listing appointments to get four listings to get three closings. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Yes. But to get those listing appointments, how many people do you have to touch, you know? Exactly. So then you, then what you, you know, so one of your goals is to get one, one, um, one listing per week. But to get one listing appointment per week, listing appointment, how many people do I need to contact? I would say at least 100. At least. So that would be my weekly goal, would be to contact at least 100 people because I need to, and then you blow up. So what if I do, I do 100 people and I don't get a listing appointment and it's still week one, it's Thursday of week one, what do I do? You keep on going. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You're about to get <laughs> your goal is to get a listing. Your goal is not to make the 100 phone calls. Right. So you keep going until you get that one listing appointment. Mm -hmm. And that's where people kind of fall down. It's like, well, okay, I didn't get it this week. I'll get it next week. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't get it this next week. I'll get it the next week. Lee, you're dying to say something. Mm -hmm. You know, I just have to say something to Dennis. <clears throat> Dennis asked, <clears throat> when he's at the listing appointment, he asked the other day about why uh, the potential seller agrees generally to the first or second agent. And Dennis, the reason is because if your package is complete, mm -hmm. you practiced your listing presentation, you can do it cold. You've got somebody who's a nemesis that says, I don't want to pay it. I don't want to pay your commission. I think your price is too low. Mm -hmm. And you get beat up like that enough that when you get in front of somebody, you give them an entire presentation, A to Z, 
listen, it's so overwhelming. They yeah. realize that you are going to be the trusted advisor. They're going to go with you. So you need to be able to walk the walk. Right. And not just talk the talk. You've got to understand that contract, that listing agreement. You got to understand closing costs. You mm -hmm. got to also, what people are looking for always is, has nothing, this is the general statements. People are looking mm -hmm. for empathy and perspective. Of course, the first okay. thing is they want to make sure that you're connecting with them. Their issues are your issues. But the second thing is now, they need your perspective, not the stuff they they looked up on an app. And the last thing is they need your professionalism where you step in and say, lean on the pin and then mm -hmm. you go to work. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Lee. And I've got to share something. I think I shared this with you guys, or maybe it was with my coaching clients, but um, there was someone we met with a while ago, uh, Megan and I met with a while ago and her, she wanted to net 430. And I mean, the house isn't even worth 410. She wanted to net 430, blah, 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 blah. And then her daughter got involved and, you know, her daughter said, you know, my mom has to have it, have 440, blah, blah, you know, on and on. So we decided to walk away. So Megan wrote a very nice letter saying, you know, we wish we could help you, but we can't, you know, maybe someone else will, you know, blow smoke up your skirt, but we're not going to. Got a, <laughs> Megan yeah. got an email yesterday from the daughter saying, my mother wants to use you guys. She's willing to list it for what it's worth. And I'm stepping out of this. So again, if you've, if you've, if you've proven your value and the people know that you can, you know, that you know what you're talking about, you're good. Okay, any other questions about the 411? This is your roadmap to meeting your goals. This is what people should be holding you accountable to. Okay, 80-20 rule. How many people have heard about Pareto's principle? Pareto's yes. principle, we've all heard about it. And it basically says that you 20% of your effort gives you 80% of your results. So do you think, what do you think some of the 20% of the effort is? Lead generation. That's absolutely, what's another 20%? I mean, the same, in the same 20%. Right, right. Basically, basically, Gary Keller says we have five jobs as a realtor, five jobs. Let's see if I can remember them. It's lead generation, lead follow up, negotiate the contract, uh, scripts and role play, and damn. That's not the fifth one, but there's a fifth one. Um, so lead generation, role play. Um, it's, it could be listings, it could be what, it, anyway. Those are your five jobs. That's what your 20% effort is. And those five things are going to give you 80% of your results. So the thing, again, those are what they call your big rocks, right? So when you talk about your daily objectives or you talk about your objectives and that, they've got to be identifiable. So what is your goal? 36 transactions or whatever. Metric driven, how will I measure my progress towards the attainment of each goal? Okay, we're what, August, August 13th. So what I need to do is look at how many closings I've had. I go, oh darn, I'm probably a little off of my goal and I need to really step it up to reach my goal, right? So that's what, that's what the uh, metric driven is, attainable. Do you have the correct systems and tools in place to set up for your success? And I'm going to say another thing, you've got to want it. You've got to be willing to do what you need to do to do it. Yes. You know, a lot of people say, well, I want to make a hundred thousand dollars. Well, that's just great. Are you willing to do what it takes to do it? Those are two different things. Mm -hmm. Purposeful uh, is the goal in alignment with your weekly, monthly, and annual goals. And then, um, can they can it be accept, can it be achieved in the time frame you're looking? 
So time blocking, how many people, we've all heard about time blocking. So what you need to do is um, look at your calendar and basically you should be blocking from 8.30. I mean, I know that the people that I'm coaching with, from 8.30 to 9, they know script practice. From 9 to 11, 9 to 12, you should have lead generation. From 1 to 2, you should have lead follow-up. And then from 3 or 2 to 4 is um, appointments. Any questions about that? No. And the philosophy is if you erase you must replace. So um, let's say from nine to 10, we're all in Ignite, right? Yes. So if you're gonna be doing script practice from nine to 11, then that first hour, you need to schedule somewhere else. If you erase, you must replace. And, you, and those are the big rocks you need to put in first. And I'll tell you what, this is, this is so funny when people talk about the generation and they talk about, look, you know, and then what happens is you get an escrow. This is, I've seen this happen so often. So you get an escrow and God, you love that escrow. You just love that escrow. That escrow is just taking like seven hours of your eight hour day every day. And you go to schedule the termite inspection and the termite inspector said, how about nine o'clock? You say, yep, I'll be there nine o'clock. And the property inspector says, well, I'll be there at 11. Yep, I'll be there at 11. And, um, you know, so you start compromising your lead generation time. You understand when the termite inspector calls and says, I can do the termite inspection at nine, you, these are the words you should be using. I have something scheduled at that time. I have something scheduled at that time. Can we do one o'clock? Okay. But people are notorious for scheduling appointments when there's other stuff that should be done. Anybody have any comments about that? Yes, I, I'm trying to get out of the habit of that now. My wife tells me all the time, you know, I'll set an appointment. And then after the fact, I look at look at my calendar like, oh no! Then I have to call and reschedule. When she says, "Babe, you know, if you had your schedule with you, or just looked at your phone first, you would, you know, alleviate all those issues." And that's something I'm trying to get in order now. Right. Mm -hmm. And when 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 you actually when you pass your test to that, at that mm -hmm. point, you'll know if someone says, "Can we get together at 11 uh, or whatever?" You'll say, "No." How about this? Mm -hmm. Again, it's just, you know, we have a tendency sometimes not to push back. We can mm -hmm. say, I've got something. And understand, you can say that if it's something personal. Right. You know, if you have a birthday party or something like that. Um, oh, Kokoska, but not Diane, but her son. I can't remember his first name. Anyway, he tells a story about one time in, in um, he was uh, working as a buyer's agent for his mother. And it was his um, wife's birthday. They were having a party and all that. And he got a call from a buyer that wanted to see this house. And instead of honoring his schedule to his wife, he went and showed the house. Mm -hmm. And they loved the house and all that. And then he asked, well, you want to write an offer? And they said, yeah, we'll call our agent and have them write the offer for us. Oh. Renee, I have a worse story. Okay. <laughs> so I used to take December off. I did a very busy business for about 10 and a half months, and I used to take 45 days off, starting around December the 15th when I had my brokerage here in San Jose. <clears throat> and I'd break it around January the 15th, the 20th, and we'd take a month off and go to Europe, and we had friends there. Or we'd go to our house in Mexico. We'd get out because my wife one day stopped me and told me I'd work 510 days in a row. Oh, and what she said to me was, if you don't um, slow down and take advantage of the fact that we're married, I'm going to divorce you. So I said, okay. So we ultimately ended up working out to about a month off. So one 
month, <clears throat> at the beginning of December, I didn't pay attention, but my wife was a very organized person and told me all year, starting around February, that we're gonna, we were going to have the Christmas dinner at our house. Now, that's a big family. A lot of people from Europe and Mexico would show up. This is about a 50-person dinner. This is three turkeys, two hams, three gallons uh, of whiskey, et cetera. So <laughs> I said nothing was going on. I had a manager in the office, and of course, December the 24th in the morning, the phone rang in my upstairs office. My wife was downstairs entertaining her friends that had flown in from another country. And before I could walk down the hallway in the second floor, my wife appeared at the doorway somehow and said to me, what are you doing? I said, well, the phone's ringing. She says, no, no, what are you doing? And I said, I'm going to answer the phone. She said, that's going to be a real estate client. So nobody's going to show properties at Christmas. And this is just not going to happen. I get on the phone, it's one of my ex-clients who said, I want to see this house in Alma Den. I said, you know, it's the day before Christmas. He said, I know, but he said, you know, we don't believe that Santa Claus has anything to do with Christmas because of our religious faith. So if it's available, we'd like to see it. My wife was right on my ear. So I said, okay, let me make a phone call. Immediately, my wife now is taking out a piece of paper and writing out the settlement requirements. <laughs> and I said, look, we'll call over there. I'm sure they're gonna say no. So I get on the phone and I have it on speaker while my wife is there. So I got physical evidence. I lead an evidentiary trail. The guy says really quickly, sure, that'd be no problem. I said, we're going to be there for five minutes. My clients live in Almaden. She said, no, come on over. We'll just pop in and out. When I got there, the guy that answered the door is 6'3 or 6'4. And he opened the door about one inch to say to me, Renee, I'm sorry, I didn't check with my wife, who immediately pulled the door open and said, who the hell are you? I said, oh, oh I'm the realtor goodness. and these are my clients. In fact, you've probably seen them on the street. They live right down the street. They said, well, we're not showing our property during Christmas and my husband misspoke. In the meantime, I told my clients and prepared them in the car that we have an aggressive door opening to please be very kind and very apologetic and let them know that you're local. And ultimately she let us in. When I got home, Renee, my wife and 12 of her intimate friends from high school were waiting for me on the other side of the door. And as soon as I opened it, all the men came with their drinks because they knew this was going to be a roasting. And oh. screaming. The roasting went on for 15 years. Dennis, it went on for 15 years. And you know something, and, and thank you for sharing oh, that. And, and you're absolutely right. We sometimes forget that the family, what is, what, what is our credo? God, family, business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah, it's a lot of money if we don't get the transaction, but the family is a lot more important. So don't be afraid to say, no, I can't do it now. How about whatever? And then I'm sure Lee, if he could have, he would have found someone else to do it or whatever. But yeah. So, um, okay. I think we got that. Uh, in the book, one thing, Gary cites Dr. Gail Matthews, who found that individuals who wrote down their goals, individuals who wrote down their goals are 39.5% more likely to succeed. Individuals who wrote down their goals and shared progress reports with a friend or an accountability partner were 76.7% more likely to succeed. So now, next we're gonna talk about the accountability cycle that um, we have. So you set your goals, you do the key activities, which are the, 80, the 20%, you measure the results, evaluate process, and then make adjustments. And the way you do that is through accountability. Um, when you go through that and you say, okay, I've done the activities and I called a hundred people, but I only got, I didn't get an appointment. You know, number one, there's a couple things going on here. There's, you know, if one of the things you should be doing over time is you should be getting your, your close ratio should be going up because you're becoming more, you're becoming better at your scripts. So if, if it's taking you 100 people to call to get an appointment, 
your goal is to eventually refine your scripts, refine your dialogue, so that eventually it only takes 75 calls to get a, an appointment. So when you have made the calls and you realize you haven't made, I keep pointing at, I, 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 like you guys can see me pointing. If you've done the activities and you look at the results, you evaluate the process. Am I calling the right people? Am I asking the right questions? You know, it's not just I got to, you know, call more people, which you do at that point, but you also have to evaluate how you're doing it. Maybe you could do it even better and then make adjustments and then set the goal again. It's the accountability is dynamic. It keeps changing over time. Any questions about this? I got to check and see if people are still on. Oh, it looks like there's still some names there. Yeah, there's still some people. Sarah, I missed you at script practice. I know. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me see. Let me go back. Okay. So create a plan for accountability. And for those that are in coaching, that's what my job is. But you share your goals. What are your long-term, long, medium, and short-term goals? You plan your check-ins. How often do you check in? We check in once a week. And um, you know, how often do you need to? I think everybody needs to check in once a week. Any more than that, you could be so far down the the, the rabbit hole that it's going to take you forever to actually get back into um, where you need to be. Yeah. And when and where will you check in? You need to check in. So that's kind of, um, you know, you've got to set a date and have it every week. So, you know, that's, we're done. Wow. Okay. Any questions or anything about any of this? Um, no. No. I think it's very good information. Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. And unfortunately, um, Renee, for all the green peas, they haven't actually struggled through this process yet. And there is a pro there is a statement, in, an ecclesiastical one, uh, that goes like this. you got to press through to get to. Because once you get to the end of this process or the other side of it, you'll have the wisdom of what the process is and how to perfect it. For, for those people that give up in the middle or they don't continue to press, they're never going to have the understanding of what it is to be victorious or to complete something. People that complete stuff, um, because winners, winners leave evidence of their trail. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a street fight. Sometimes you won't want to make the last call. But Gary Keller in Schiff talks about being the right of middle. And when he says that, it's a very simple line. But when you go down and define, when he defines what's right of the middle, he's talking about becoming extraordinary because in every one of you is an extraordinary individual. Right. And what stops you from being that is the person in the mirror. So when exactly. Renee gives this information and says, do this and you'll get results, don't talk mm -hmm. yourself out of that. It's an instruction that you have to press through to get to. And even though you might customize what she's saying, she's giving you a blueprint for success. And don't kid yourself, you do these things, you'll get results. And if you don't, you don't, I'm sorry, I have a tendency to be a little blunt. If you don't, you have no one to blame. My, my thinking has always been that, you know, if you, I mean, Keller Williams gives you everything you need to succeed, everything you need to succeed. And if you don't, again, the mirror, Dennis, you have your hand up. Yes, I wanted to ask Lee. Lee, what were some of your, um, I wrote down a question, what were some of your rough patches early on in your career, like that you had to overcome to get, oh, it's to simple. break through? Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, operant conditioning. It goes mm -hmm. like this. You try to do something and you get successful at it, you continue to do. Mm -hmm. If you continue to make efforts and you're not successful, 
you need to modify what you're doing and go off in another direction or get smarter about what you're doing. The point is that mm -hmm. it never stops. And as your requirement okay. as an agent for all of us is to become better and better. Because when I talk about perspective, okay. I mean understanding what's going on on the ground. And the way you get that, because real estate's nothing like anything else you've ever done. You're going to have to educate yourself in the terms of business, in the terms of real estate, in the terms of finance, and also, finally, in the terms of how to connect people, even people you may not like, but you can be something for them. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be very clear about not doing the impossible. Be careful of that. Because mm -hmm. you'll have once mm -hmm. in a while an agent that'll say, a client will say, I want this much money. And my reaction after many years was I started to laugh and I'd agree with him. If that were possible, just show me the goose that lays the egg. So no. we started to laugh. <laughs> but what happens with some people is they want you to do the impossible stuff at almost no cost. And the reason they want to do that is because these kind of clients need a different agent. Mm -hmm. And you've got to know when to cut your losses. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're constantly con feeding information to someone on the MLS, if you're out previewing and it, it's a two-way street, they don't come halfway across, cut your losses. Right. Okay. Because you're not an information source, you're in a business. Yes, sir. So here's the deal. Unlike anything else you've ever done, this requires your focus. And mm -hmm. believe me, there's a lot of distractions in life. Mm -hmm. And anybody has been in the business a long time will tell you that you're going to get beat up by your distractions, but you got to keep a clear focus, which means when Renee talks about this, the big thing that she's saying is you make the effort, make the effort, make the effort. You learn what you learn. If you, if you get beat up in the process, that's part of it. Exactly. But remember that you are doing something where you are going to develop an independent business all based on you, the person in the mirror. And when you get that person right, the business actually will come to you. But in the beginning, it's your it's, Goliath. It's remember hard. Remember that I told you about Goliath? That I told yes. you the story, right? Yeah. I remember don't think so. Okay, so the story, very quickly about Goliath, is everybody knows a story about this little story, right? So David shows up to defend the, the, the whole country, right? Because Saul doesn't know what to do. So the, the point that everyone missed is that when David showed up, you know he had five stones? This gets completely overlooked. He had five stones. You know why? Why? Because Goliath had brothers. Oh. He wasn't worried about the Goliath that showed up. Mm -hmm. He was the one, he was worried about the ones that showed up afterward. Mm -hmm. Do you understand his perspective? Mm -hmm. His yes. perspective was not this big thing in front of him. His, his perspective was the other three that will probably show up out of the crowd. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a Goliath that you don't want to make the last hundred calls, if you don't want to go and reach out to people, I get it. Maybe this is the wrong business. Because somewhere inside you, you got to have that gut feeling that you're going to press through until you succeed. Because anyone that has that level of determination wins no matter what the event is. Yes, so, speak. so when you get to your presentation, you get to your first opportunity. I hope you've practiced it 60 or 70 times and failed 30 or 40. Because when people beat you up in your presentation and practice and you get in front of a real live person, you're going to find not everybody's going to be aggressive. In fact, they're going to welcome you into their home. And mm -hmm. as you sit down and start to talk, their fear and concerns are going to drop away because they suddenly realize you know your process. Yeah. Yeah. And if you know your process, what are they going to ask about? They don't even understand it. And when you begin to answer enough of their questions in the beginning, you get over the hump where the connection's made. And once the connection's made, yeah, you're not only going to find out you're going to treat these people like gold, but they're going to treat you like that too. Mm -hmm. But you got to get serious about this. You mm -hmm. can't just be halfway in the water and half out in real estate. Because when mm -hmm. you tell someone you're a realtor, you open yourself up to every question in the world, starting with, what do you think about the Fed's going to do? What do you think about the liquidity issue? What do you think about the neighbor cutting down my fence? What do you mm -hmm. think about the neighbor in the back that says he's not going to pay for the fence that fell down? Suddenly, you've got to have answers. And part mm -hmm. of those answers is, let me find out for you, and you get back. You start the dialogue, but you continue to press, press, press. And at the end, you look like Renee sitting back telling you casually <laughs> that this is how you do it without going over the war stories, the battle scars, the unbelievable things that happened. And to give you an example, I had a guy one day sign off a title and he goes out in the parking lot. My escrow officer called me. He was a seller. We sold his house now. 
And she said, listen, did your friend, did your client fall asleep in his car? I said, not at all. She goes out, he passed away. Killed the deal. I had to call the other agents and said, well, you know, we can't sell you something that, uh, that goes into uh, a, a trust settlement on a death. So the thing is that you have to be prepared for every possibility. Yeah. So here's the thing, Dennis, I hear you talking, but yeah. you know, you're going to have to get enough understanding to be able to stand up. You're a big guy. Okay. You have to be able to stand up and walk the walk. And you, you found one place in Keller Williams where this company has built an agent centric business model that is unlike anything else in the country. And so if you go somewhere else and I won't mention who it is, they're going to give you an office, a desk and a phone. That's it. Okay. And if you need training, you pay for it. And when you pay for something, rather than being given from the heart, it's not that authentic. So what you're getting here is an instruction list from some of the smartest people in the business that have a structure. And if you just do the structure, you know, Monsignor Burns used to tell us all, he wanted our souls in the room during Latin practice. He didn't mean our ecclesiastical souls. He meant our feet. So the thing is, you got to show up. You got to, you got to do the work. You got to begin to understand. So I'll just say something to you, Dennis. If you're, yeah. if you're new in the business, start watching a movie or a programs like money line or any thing you want, where you find out about the business, find out about what's going on locally in the area, whether you're in Santa Cruz or San Jose, find out in a larger context, you can have the conversation. And the last thing I'll suggest to you is get a newspaper and read it every morning before you talk to your client. You want to have egg on your face sometime? I did not read the paper one morning when I was in Chico. So I drove to my office and my client called and said, hey, what's this deal about the city requiring sewer laterals for everybody's on septic? And you're like, huh? I said, I haven't had a cup of coffee. Let me call you back. I immediately got the paper and read it was on the front page. That it ended up in a listing. You read the paper every morning. You read the business section, the local news. I would, you know, personally, I'm not sure about the political stuff is that important at right. this point but you stay in touch with the things that your clients are going to want to know about okay. and suddenly you're going to have a lot to talk about because you won't say i'm just the realtor you can say listen did you read in the paper they're sitting they're considering raising property tax mm -hmm. how's that for an opener you begin talking right. about what's relevant what's relevant mm -hmm. what's happening right now what's happening right now in your market mm -hmm. you do that you're going to be just fine dennis Thank you, Lee. But you got to commit. You. you got to engage now. We need you to engage to become successful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, it's I'm funny sorry, that man. I didn't mean that. No, mean no that's down. fine. That's you why got I, think up. <laughs> I, I think it's very valuable, and, it, and it's interesting. Yeah. Is is one of just shared real quickly. The other day, I got a call. It was, and it, this is how how it works. If you have built a reputation, it, I got a. Um, Referral from a gentleman I know, and and haven't I, I haven't sold anything of theirs, but I've known him. He's an insurance agent. He's in Rotary with me. He said he gave my name to a friend who was looking. His sister was looking to move back here. Okay, so he called me, and then the sister called me, and I called the sister back, and you know she said, well, I don't think we're going to be able to afford to come back. You know, we're looking in Oregon. Blah blah blah. And I said, can I give you a piece of advice? And she goes, sure. And I said, well, are you thinking of moving very quickly? And she goes, no. I said, I'll tell you what, hang on. Hang on for a couple of months. Because I think you're going to probably be able to get more for your money in a few months. Now, granted, her Chico house is going to be a little less. But again, you know, and she goes, oh, my God, I hadn't thought about that. You know, I hadn't thought about the fact that, the, you know, and. She was so appreciative. I'll never do this. I, you know, I don't think I'll ever do business with her. I don't care. Mm -hmm. That's my job is to impart what I know, what I believe. And I always preface it by saying, this is Renee Mello. This is not anybody else, you know, mm -hmm. but this is my opinion. So, okay. Well, thank you everybody. And I want to remind you tomorrow from nine to 10, uh, zip form templates with uh, with Laura, which will be great. Those are for those people that can make things go quicker, you know, do your zip forms quickly. And then from 10 to 11, it's going to be Lending Basics with Michael Siglio of Wells Fargo Bank. Any other questions at all before we say goodbye? 
Okay. Yeah, and Lee, thank you so much for participating. I, uh, your 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 experience is, I mean, it, it, thank you, thank you. You, you know, <clears throat> I really enjoy these classes, Dennis. I've been in the business since 1979. I'm probably oh, been wow. in the business longer than you've been alive. You know, yes, yeah, or close <laughs> to it, right? And I'm still here taking classes. Mm. Absolutely, I'm still learning from an A. Renee, mm -hmm. you know, I'm learning every time you guys get on these screens. I mean, someone who says it doesn't do that is mentally dead. Yes. Right. And no one's going to want that person to represent them. So every day when you get up is a, not only a gift from God, mm -hmm. but more importantly, it's a time for you to stand up. Because if you do not, you did not. Mm. Yep. So the thing is, Dennis, yes, you sir. need to step forward. Lean into this. This is a tough, big business, but when it's done, it's going to be amazing. You're going to be able to sit back in your own office and control mm -hmm. your life, your environment, where you're going to live, what you're going to drive. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's so yeah. powerful. Your, like your words speak volumes, you know, like it, it really is energized me, you know. Okay, well, we need guys. you now to lean in, take the classes, <laughs> go get beat up a little bit. Ask for this. She's been through a lot of these battles. You know what Just happens after you've been beat up a lot? You get in the ring, you look like Rocky. You know why? Because you've been beat up a lot, but you won a lot. Yes, sir. I tell people I start when I was when I started this business, I was six foot two. I'm not five foot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, we'll see you later. All Thank right. you. Bye. Right. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> so so good to see you here, Lee. I'm really having a good time. <laughs> I'm so happy you joined QW2. But um, are they? Are you guys all done? Everybody's done. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.